Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to make a bank of yin long cells. These are 2.3 volt cells. Uh, the last video I did was headway cells. They were 3.2 volt cells. So these will be running 6 in series rather than 4. Um, I also made the bars myself, same time as the headway video. So make sure if, if you want to make your own bars, go check out that video. There's some tips and tricks in there to help you make your own bars and I did these cheap I did the whole headway video and my yin long video for $18 so it's very affordable for anyone to do these yin long cells you do not want to mix with AGM batteries as you'll see in the videos they are higher voltage and they will pull the cells down or the AGM will pull these cells down every time you shut off your vehicle and what happens is your alternator ends up working super hard to charge these cells it's going like full blast as soon as you start your vehicle to charge these cells back to where they want to be so you don't want to do that just run yin long if you're going to run yin long with these cells, you're going to want to charge at least 14.2 volts, and it's recommended that you get that voltage higher. 15.2 is great because a lot of aftermarket and factory vehicle electronics will still work with 15.2 volts. When you start getting up to like 15.6, where it's like the sweet spot for these cells, you start to have problems where Sometimes your head unit won't like the voltage or something else in your vehicle won't like the voltage. So that's why I recommend running 15.2. But if you can run 15.6 volts, these cells will greatly appreciate it. After 15.6, you won't see much of a difference, though you can charge them higher. The max voltage on a bank of these is 16.8 volts. The minimum voltage is around 10, 12 volts. They can go down to 10 volts, but once you hit the 12 volt mark, the capacity just drops right off. And if you ever seen a graph of these cells, you'll know what I'm talking about. They, they run smooth all the way across until they hit about that 12 volt mark and then they just crash. So try and keep them above 12 volts. If you're dropping down below 12 volts, you really need an alternator or more batteries to support the power that you're drawing. You're also going to need nuts for the studs. So go ahead and pick yourself some up. They're M6 1.75. They do make different variations of these that are 1.5 or 2.0. You want to make sure you get 1.75s and test fit them on your cells to make sure that they thread all the way like this. And you do not want to torque on these studs too hard. They're, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but 7 pounds of torque is the most that you want to put on these. So do not use nylon locking nuts because it actually takes more than seven pounds of torque to turn a nylon locking nut on. So do not use nylon locking nuts. And we'll get right to the video. I'm not gonna make this one as long. It's gonna be a quick assembly. I'm just doing little clips and we'll get some testing in the vehicle and all that kind of stuff for you. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, now that we have the cells laid out and the end bars are on, we can lay these out and start assembling the final bank. Now there's a couple different ways you can lay these out. You can do it where the bars are just like this and you'll end up with a long bank or you can set them up differently. Yeah. The layout like this. Oh, 
I got to flip this over, but. So you have a positive and negative, and these you get connected. And then you do the same with that. I'll set it up and I'll show you guys. All right, so I have the cells assembled in a block configuration. As you can see, there's a positive here and a negative here. So it's positive to a negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive on the bottom, negative up top, positive, negative, positive, negative. So in the end, you end up with one negative terminal and one positive. I'll go ahead and throw it on the meter here for you. Thirteen point three eight volt. And it's not fully charged, but that would be a battery. All right, so I have the fluke on the in-long bank here. And that's the only battery in my truck right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a start up. Voltmeter up here. Fired right up, no problem. Got... 14 2, 14 3. Alright, sorry about that. My uh, Pioneer Smart Sync kicked me out. So we're at 14 3, 14 2 back here. See how hot the alternator is getting. It's warm, so it's definitely working. Hey YouTube, it's early. I haven't started my truck since last night. Let's go see what the voltage is on the in-log. Bam! That's all I gotta say about that. Wouldn't it be nice to just come out to your vehicle and be doing 14s before you even start it? Alright, so we're going to see what it meters with a lead acid battery. The term lab on the windshield. And about, about DB drag location. Windows are up. Nothing's open. Lead acid voltage. And we'll see what it does here. And then I'll replay the same song. I'll hook up the in long and then we'll test that. And this is all done vehicle off.
All right. So we got an idea there, baseline. We'll go off that. So on the meter, we did a 132.2 at 37 hertz. And this was going up to volume 50. So I'll reset it and hook up the inlong and we'll do this again. All right, same song, uh, Yin Long hooked up, meter, same thing, windows up, placement. So now we'll go see what we metered. I honestly don't even know what this is gonna do. I've never tested it. So we got 132.6. I don't even remember what the other battery did, but oh, it's 33 hertz. What the hell? Let me see if I played the right part of the song. back I got enough voltage to rerun this Had to have hit the same part, I'm sure. Oh. Let's see what we got. 132.6, 33 hertz. <laughs> Let me know in the comments how you like it. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, share my videos if, if you want. And yeah, stay tuned. Hope you like the new content.